All right, everybody, welcome. My name is Sean Polburn, and I'm the Executive Director of the Borector Center for Calling and Career. And today we're going to have a career conversation chat. Um, and the topic is going to be COVID-19, what's going on in the job market related to internships, jobs. And, and we want to talk today about specific things that we can share with you, things that we're hearing, that we're seeing when we're talking to employers and we're talking about hearing in the news. Um, we want to provide some tips and resources, things you can be looking at, and just provide some advice and things that we can share as the Borector Center as we're looking very closely and watching this carefully. And what does it mean for you, for students? Uh, whether you're at you're a senior about to graduate, whether you're earlier in your college years thinking about internships, uh, we're going to talk to you today. We're going to have some messages we hope we can share. So just a little bit of housekeeping as we get started. Um, one of the things I'll ask is if uh, you're joining on the line here, please go ahead and mute your uh, microphone, which looks like everyone's doing. That's fantastic. And what also helps as well is if you um, turn off the camera for yourself so that um, that helps save the bandwidth a little bit. So just turn off your own personal video and you should still be able to see me. So um, uh, that, that will be good. Now, one thing we're going to do throughout our session today is uh, answer your questions. So we're gonna make use of the chat feature. So please, as we're going today, if a question comes to mind, go ahead and type that in the chat feature here and we'll we'll hit those at certain pauses. And then certainly if you have a if you have a complicated question that you just wanna you wanna jump in and, and ask ask live, we'll we'll allow for time to do that too. All right, I have uh, a few folks from the Borector Center that are going to be presenting today, and I, I want to introduce them. Um, they're, we're going to we're going to kind of go back and forth a little bit, but um, some of these are going to be faces that students maybe you haven't seen as much, and that's because they're doing some things behind the scenes that really make things successful for all of us. So you're going to hear a little bit from Matt Adkins. He's one of our leads on employer relations, and he is um, going to share a lot of information from us. Matt has uh, been at Hope uh, almost two years and comes to us having been a recruiter um, prior to coming to Hope. So his, his background there is going to be very helpful. Um, we're also going to hear from Casey Petro, um, another one of our members of the employer relations team. And Casey has um, also been on staff of the Borector Center for about a year and a half. Um, she has prior experience coming um, to Hope College. She worked at Northwestern University uh, for a few years, and Casey's doing a fantastic job on the employer relations side of things. And then you're also going to he uh, hear from Megan uh, Schultz. She is uh, maybe a more familiar face, and Megan is um, a member of the team, um, our guru on everything and anything related to networking and, um, and, and some of the technologies that we have here. So we're going to talk about these things as we go today. Um, but first of all, I just uh, want to say, hey, this is really interesting times, and um, I hope today's information is going to be something that you can find valuable and um, some, some advice and resources that are going to be relevant for you. I want to start with turning it over to Matt. So Matt, why don't you take it away with a general overview of what we're seeing in the job market? Wonderful. Well, thank you everybody for coming. I know uh, some of the names, uh, some of the faces, and then a lot of you, uh, a lot of students I haven't been able to meet yet. So pleasure to be with you this morning virtually. Uh, the uh, There's three sort of main areas that I was going to cover today. So one, uh, just a, a quick background and overview on what we thought the job market was going to look like. Uh, for spring graduates and people looking for internships this summer, and, and there's a reason why I'll go over that. Uh, a little bit of industry analysis and overview on where things are at, who's being hurt, what industries are doing well, uh, and then some advice from area HR leaders and recruiters uh, that we've been interacting with directly to try to get some some tips for you all on on job searching or internship searching. So, uh, so first. Jumping into it, uh, background on the job market coming into March of 2020. Uh, and the good news, uh, and I do think it's good news, uh, the market was just incredible. Uh, historic lows for unemployment rates, uh, job stability rates at near all time highs. Uh, so I know it seems like uh, maybe why are we talking about something that doesn't exist today? Uh, but there's a lot of economists that think because we had hit this at such a high point, and had such a drastic drop 
uh, and economic activity that it does make it more likely that in a three to four month period, whenever a lot of these stay at home orders are ultimately lifted and uh, job activity picks up again, the economic recovery should be much faster than let's say the, the recovery in 08, 09 timeframe. There's still some uncertainty about what that'll look like, but it is a good thing that we hit, uh, hit this crisis on such an uh, employment, job market, and economic high. Uh, so jumping into some industry analysis, a lot of this you guys know too, I mean, you're watching the news, but what industries are doing well? Uh, life sciences companies, prescription drug manufacturers, medical device companies. Uh, so think companies like Stryker uh, in West Southwest Michigan, think Medtronic, uh, companies that are manufacturing ventilators, uh, 3M making masks, uh, consumer products companies. So uh, if you've been to the grocery store and looked at the cereal aisle, uh, Kellogg's and General Mills uh, are having cereal fly off the shelf. And those grocery stores are having products fly off the shelf and, uh, and staffing up considerably. Uh, what industries are hurting? Uh, if any of you have aunts, uncles, or parents that work for cruise line industries, uh, or even, again, if you're just watching the news, uh, travel, entertainment, hospitality, uh, sort of getting hammered right now. And, and actually, I, I wanted to make another point too. Really, every industry is getting, even uh, industries that might surprise you that have a lot of activity uh, are experiencing some significant pain points right now. So for instance, hospitals, uh, a lot of you have probably heard of Beaumont Health uh, on the southeast side of the state of Michigan. Uh, it's about $5 billion in revenue, eight hospitals, one of the largest health systems in the Midwest. Uh, the Wall Street Journal article, uh, there's a Wall Street Journal article last week that said they're losing $70 million a month right now. Uh, so even though they have over a thousand COVID positive patients, their hospitals are at capacity because they've canceled elective procedures, primary care visits, and ER traffic is low. Uh, their main revenue points, the hospital is bleeding cash. And same with newspaper industries. All of us, at least in West Michigan, uh, are looking at WZZM uh, and WoodTV8.com and the Holland Sentinel, but very few of us are actually subscribing or paying for those articles. Uh, so, uh, and the news industry relies on companies to, to buy advertisements and companies aren't buying advertisements now. So the newspaper industry, despite being busier than ever, uh, is making less money than ever. So just think about, I, I give you the background just so you, you th uh, you think creatively and strategically about what industries are having certain pain points and where, so you can figure out where opportunities might be. Uh, and then as far as local employers, uh, some of it comes right off of that. So a company like TR Yacht, uh, some of you may have friends or family that work there. I talked to their head of HR about a week and a half ago. It's about 550 employees and all but about 30 had been furloughed. Uh, as of a few weeks ago, because it's a product that's sort of a, a luxury product item. And when economic conditions go down, demand for luxury items like a $100,000 or more yacht uh, goes way down. So we'll see what their recovery looks like in the next few months. Whereas companies like Meyer, Spartan Nash, which owns Family Fair and Spartan Stores, Gordon Food Service, uh, lots of economic activity uh, and, and jobs open as well. So there wasn't. There's an actually an article that we'll send you a link to later, uh, with WZZM that that highlighted some of the local employers that are are hiring now, and uh, I've got it open on my computer. So Amazon has a distribution facility in West Michigan. Uh, Meyer uh, shipped uh, the service, picking up groceries at the store for consumers and dropping them off. Uh, Samaritas, one of the largest senior living communities in the state. Two Men in a Truck, Spartan Nash, uh, lots, of, uh, lots of examples of companies that do have jobs that are available right now. Uh, and we'll get into some of that in a second. Uh, the last thing I wanted to share, and again, I, I think Sean shared this at the beginning, but if you've got questions, uh, we'll have time for questions in about two minutes when I finish up this overview. Feel free to type them in the chat, unmute your mic if you'd rather just ask it live, try to treat this a little bit more of a informal discussion. Uh, but I wanted to just lastly touch on some advice that we've heard from some area HR leaders and recruiters. So I'm going to pull up my iPad here that has some of the email traffic. I think the biggest thing that they've shared with us is to have a long-term perspective on this. Uh, hopefully this is a three to at worst six month blip on being able to find exactly what you were hoping to find. 
uh, before we get to uh, back to normal or whatever the new normal looks like. Uh, so having a long-term perspective is, I think, important. Uh, this is an email from somebody at HR Solutions, which is a uh, one of the best HR consulting firms here in West Michigan. They do some recruiting work as well. Uh, they said, my advice for seniors uh, is to use this time to prepare to be the best candidate. Perfect your resume, put together a portfolio of work, research different fields and companies, uh, and be able to tell an interviewer four months from now if that's how long it takes to land a position uh, what you were doing while you had this extra time at home. Uh, was it spinning your, uh, spinning your thumbs, frustrated, uh, not doing a lot, or were you finding ways to add additional skills, finding ways to network, finding ways to volunteer, finding a job that maybe isn't exactly what you wanted uh, to build additional skill sets before the, the job market really truly opens up. So having that long-term perspective, uh, which I think feeds right into the next point of control what you can control, uh, the job market is sort of inextricably linked to uh, to these stay-at-home orders that governors are issuing, uh, and that just affects a lot of different industries, a lot of different companies. So the longer these stay-at-home orders get extended, the less likelihood there is of finding a great internship or a great job, because all these companies are trying to figure out how to adapt to this too. There was a, a really interesting Wall Street Journal article this morning uh, about uh, a lot of the largest banks in the country that had been completely unprepared for how to do remote work have spent tens of millions of dollars to try to figure this out because they, it's just an industry that's never thought about remote work before. So HR, uh, HR officials and companies are all trying to figure out how do we do this? Uh, and I think sometimes internships and, and job hiring activity is delayed as a result of that. Uh, and so control what you can control. You can't control the fact that this public health crisis is going on, that there's been this significant downturn economically. Uh, but what you can control is things like staying healthy uh, is probably the biggest priority. So some of you may have pre-existing health conditions. You may be immunocompromised. You have to stay as healthy as you can. And that may uh, be different than some of you who may be more open to different work activities. Uh, I think you can do things like industry research, job research, networking, uh, which Megan, uh, colleague Megan will talk about in a bit, is probably the most important thing that you can do anytime you're job searching, whether it's a great economy or not. Uh, now is a great time to get a hold of people. I've been sending uh, uh, LinkedIn connection invites for the past few months, and just this week I've had more people confirm them than ever because people are at home and they've got time to check their LinkedIn account or check their Hotmail or Yahoo account that they don't look at very often. So even though you can't meet people for coffee, you can definitely connect with people in a lot of different ways. Uh, and then you might have to just have realistic expectations about what work that you can do right now. Uh, ideally, you'd be going into a full, for seniors, you're going into a full-time job making 50 to 60,000 a year in the geography that you want, in the industry that you want, and that is the job market that we had sort of anticipated would exist for you. It just doesn't exist right now. We're hoping that that job market is back in three to six months. Uh, but what you can do in the meantime is you could take uh, a position at Meyer or Amazon in a distribution facility or a warehouse, build up some additional skill sets, get exposure to how the operation works. Uh, you could uh, contact an area nonprofit and figure out other things that you could do either on site, helping a place like Community Action House process donations of uh, PPE equipment for hospitals. Uh, Spectrum Health just sent out a, a link last week asking for people to sign up for volunteer uh, positions at the hospital. There are there are ways that you can stay active in the community, uh, assuming it's not a significant health risk. And then also you can practice professional development. Uh, we've got tools like Interview Stream through Borigder that lets you practice online interviewing. Uh, we've got a class coming up uh, next month that Borigder Center is launching on training how to uh, use Tableau, uh, uh, a, a software platform uh, that gives you exposure to data analytics. Uh, there's a lot of different tools I think you can take advantage of to uh, better yourself uh, and, and professionally develop during this time. So that's a quick rundown on what we thought the job market would look like, why we think it will lead to a faster recovery, a little bit about what's going on with industries and what we're hearing from HR professionals. Uh, that's the overview that I wanted to share. So I guess we'll we'll see what questions you might have or I'll, I'll turn it back over to, to Sean to moderate at this point.
Yeah, thank you very much, Matt. Um, if uh, students, if you have any questions, go ahead and type them in the chat or go ahead and turn uh, turn your microphone and camera on and feel free to ask one in person. And um, if, if uh, I'll give you a minute to do that. And while, and while I'm waiting, um, Matt, just a quick reaction. I, I used to be an HR guy before coming to Hope. Um, you know what it's like to work in HR. Um, what I'm hearing is, is human resources people at companies who are typically in charge of all the, a lot of the hiring, they are so busy and they're so focused on taking care of their existing workforce and all of the, the wrinkles that are coming with work from home and, and remote working and all that, that hiring, uh, adding new staff right now, it just unfortunately is not on top of our priority list. Are you hearing that kind of thing as well? Yeah, I mean, in fact, the recruiter that had sent me that note, uh, giving some advice, had said that all of his executive searches that he's doing right now are uh, on pause. So for those of you that don't know how the search market works, a company will contract with a search firm and say, hey, can you fill this finance position or IT position? Uh, all of his searches have canceled right now because HR leaders are just scrambling to figure out how to take care of their people. So it, and a lot of it is is tied to the the stay at home orders. Eventually those are gonna to have to get lifted uh, because we can't have every company in Michigan or frankly the country uh, sitting back and, and doing nothing without having just utterly devastating economic impact. So once those stay at home orders get lifted, I think you will see a pretty quick uptick in, in hiring and things will start to get back to normal. All right, great. Any other questions for Matt? All right. If not, I will turn it over now to Casey, and Casey's going to share some resources with us. All right. So I am going to share my screen really quick. Okay. Can everybody see that? We are seeing your screen. Perfect. Okay. So we're going to launch into some resources and some handshake tips. So hopefully you guys will be able to take the tangible next steps on your career search. So I just first wanted to share some resources. The first one is candor.co and it has a live updating list of companies and what they're hiring, hiring freeze, offer rescinded, layoffs, statuses are. And this is kind of a screenshot of that. I did a search for Google and you can see that there are multiple tags for some companies and some of them are a little bit contradictory. This is 100% user generated. So I could go in and submit something, you could go in and submit something. So take everything here with a little bit of a grain of salt and do your own research. But this is certainly a really good place to start if you're looking for specific companies and seeing what their status is in terms of hiring. WZZM is a local news station that has a list of West Michigan businesses that are currently hiring. So you can check out this list and these slides are gonna go out to you after this presentation today. So you can click on any of these links, but there are a list of West Michigan businesses that are hiring and that's updated, I think weekly. So you can check back on that link every week. So the next resource we have is Parker Dewey. Parker Dewey is a micro internships site, which, is, which are short-term paid professional assignments. I do want to let you know that while this is a really great opportunity, the site is being inundated with students interested in these opportunities, just given the current job market. So check it out there. I also linked their resources. They have some good job search and internships um, resources linked there as well. Um, so you can look at it, see if there's something that's interesting to you and use it as a resource. Um, I did just want to let you know that they a lot of those opportunities are being applied for. So next up, we on Monday sent, if you are a senior on this call, we sent out a questionnaire on Monday to all seniors. So no matter where you are in your job search, if you're looking, if you haven't started, if you have a job, please go ahead and fill that out. We would love to connect with you on whatever your status is, if you need help in any way. Um, there's also an opportunity to upload your resume there. We are reviewing all resumes. So even if you think your resume is done, please upload that. Uh, we've encouraged all students to do that. And some who think their resume is done, we've found a, a few tweaks on. So if you update it, that will give us an opportunity just to put a second set of eyes on that for you. Uh, so that's another resource for you. 
And before I launch into the handshake tips, I just want to talk a little bit about what handshake is saying about employers. They did a uh, study at the end of March to kind of collect data on where employers are at. Um, so they took a, they asked employers if they plan to hire more or less. And many employers, as um, I think Matt talked about, are still kind of evaluating where they're at um, in terms of hiring. So quite a few are making no changes or still kind of evaluating the impact. I think it is promising to see that Handshake is reporting 9% are planning to hire fewer candidates, while 4% are planning to hire more. Um, so I think for me, it was surprising to see that only 9% are hiring fewer. So I hope that that does make you feel good for your job search. Um, also, I just want to let you know that a lot of employers are going virtual, as you know, also for their interviewing. So just have patience if you are in the interview process or if you enter that, that it might be a little bit slower than a traditional interview process. They're navigating new technology, they're putting in place new processes. So as you can see, 89% of employers are adopting or increasing virtual interviews. So as that process is new for you, it's also new for employers. So just have patience with both yourself and employers. And finally, employers are reaching out at a record scale to students. At the end of March, Handshake reported 1 million reach outs from recruiters to students. This is not students to recruiters. This is recruiters contacting students on Handshake. So, and that was the single biggest week that they've had in the history of Handshake. And they're only expecting that to continue to increase. So um, as you can see in this graph, it's increasing. The top five industries that are reaching out are um, in some tech fields, healthcare, education, um, business, psychology, biology are also big majors that they're being reached out to. But if you don't see your major on there, if you don't see your industry, that doesn't mean that employers aren't reaching out. Um, it just means that it's not in the top five. Oh, I just wanted to talk about some quick stats before we get into the tips for your Handshake use. Um, on Handshake, they are reporting that 82% of all jobs and 52% of internships are full-time, so they are out there. You just have to find them. And within uh, 50 miles of Holland, Michigan, there are 108 paid internships and 384 paid full-time jobs. So they're out there. Keep your searches going in Handshake and we're always here to help you. I've also included the Handshake Guide. Um, they have a lot of helpful resources in getting hired remotely, which include reaching out to employers, how to navigate a virtual interview. Um, so you can check those resources out here at this link. So tip one is tailoring your profile. I talked about how one million rec recruiter reach outs what happened at the end of March. Those recruiter reach outs are happening to students who share their interests on Handshake. So 80% of those students who share their interests on Handshake are receiving a message from a recruiter. That's eight out of every 10 students or 16 out of 20 of us on this presentation right now. So make sure that you're filling out your career interests. That is located on the lower left-hand side of your profile. It's things like um, the location you're looking for a job, the industry, um, the job type. And if you're a little bit uncertain, there is a handshake guide that I've linked here that, that makes suggestions based on what you're interested in. Um, I would also highly encourage you to fill out your past experiences, upload a resume, include relevant skills, courses, projects that you've done because recruiters are looking at profiles. So it's really important to fill that out on handshake. Um, most of you, and I did look at your Handshake profile, some of them are fantastic, and some of them could maybe use a little bit of work, so make sure you are tailoring your profile, but more than that, make sure you're uploading your resume, and make sure you're uploading the most current resume. Um, I have found sometimes that students will have a resume uploaded from their junior year and forget to upload their most recent one. Just make sure you double check. Most of you have your resumes uploaded. If you don't, upload it, and just double check that you have your most current resume. If you're a little uncertain, I've included the instructions on how to upload that. And then there's also a handshake guide um, if you run into any issues with that. So this is really important. I mentioned using filters and handshakes. So when you log in and click on jobs, it's going to take you to this screen that I've attached here. Um, you're going to want to filter. So you can select full time. You can select an industry. You can select a job type. Um, 
make sure you drill down into exactly what you're looking for. And then the most important step is saving that search. So once you've taken the time to create all of your filters, you can go ahead and save that search and you'll get alerts um, to your email. And if you have the app on your phone, you'll get alerts there too when a new job it, that you've set your filter for is uploaded to Handshake from an employer. So I've also included guides here. And again, if you have any issues, you can reach out to me or the Career Center and we'll help you out. So tip four, this is also important if um, you want to have employers find your profile, you have to make it public. If you don't make your profile public, employers can't see you. So I would highly recommend that you do this. I've included the profile privacy options here just in case you wanted to read a little bit more about it. But we highly encourage all students to set their profiles as public. When you um, first log into your profile, all of your settings are private. So you'll have to go in and change that yourself. So if you are having trouble finding a job or kind of discerning what your next step is, we'd love you to use tip five and log into Handshake and schedule an appointment with us. We host all sorts of appointments um, from job search, mock interviews, networking, LinkedIn, a lot of the things that we're talking about today, we have appointments for in Handshake. And again, if you're uncertain about which appointment to sign up for, you can reach out to us at careers.hope.edu and we'll help you figure out which appointment type is best for you. And again, if you fill out that survey, um, that senior questionnaire that I mentioned earlier, we will also email you with what appointment types um, might be best for what you're looking for. So tip six, and if you're here today, you've done this tip, you've signed up for an event in Handshake, we are continuing to add new events in Handshake. Employers are hosting virtual events in Handshake, which I approve for our office. So those get posted up um, fairly regularly. There are some virtual career fairs. There's an education, a virtual education career fair coming up on May 11. So just check out the events tab. It's constantly being updated um, for more events uh, in the future. So tip seven is to be active. Being active is the best way to get a job or the job or opportunity that you're looking for. Um, you can register for events. You can join the Hope College Connection, which Megan's going to talk about next. Interact with employers, apply for jobs and internships, and schedule an appointment with us if you still feel stuck. Um, we're here for you, and we want to help you in this search. Um, so with that, do you guys have any questions about anything I've talked about now? Casey, this is Sean. While we're waiting to see if any questions come in, just a question for you. Um, you you see the job postings that come in through through Handshake. Um, we get uh, roughly how many new ones every day, um, and then also uh, what would you say is something that you know from from what you know about employers and what they're looking for and hope students um, of all the tips you mentioned. Uh, which one is the most underutilized by HOPE students that we have the best opportunity to, to help all of us uh, kind of Im improve our, our opportunity, uh, potential to, to find opportunities? I think the best tip is to have your profile updated and public. I don't think enough people take advantage of filling out their profile because the amount of recruiters reaching out to candidates is astounding in Handshake. So if you don't have it currently updated, make sure you do that. I think that is the most under underutilized aspect. And in terms of jobs, uh, daily, we probably have that we're approving 100 to 200 jobs at every any given time during a month. the month. We probably have about 10,000 live in Handshake. Um, so jobs come on every day, but they also fall off every day, um, kind of depending on where they are in the job search process. Great, thank you. Any other questions for Casey? All right, well, let me um, make a transition here. You know, while there's, there's thousands of jobs available in Handshake and new ones coming on every day, um, just applying for jobs all by itself is not the best way to connect and get jobs. So I want to turn it over to Megan Schelt now and have her share a little bit more about um, how do people really find jobs today? Megan. Thanks, Sean. 
And thank you everyone for being here. I think one of the things I'm reflecting on throughout this presentation is there's a lot of information out there. There's a lot of steps that we're recommending. And one of my best pieces of advice I can give you is just break it down for yourself. Finding a job is a full-time job. And I know that sounds really cheesy, but schedule it out for yourself. Try two, maybe three new things each day this week. You know, you have finals coming up, but there's plenty of time that you could be spending. Um, maybe that's blocking an hour on a Saturday morning um, to just take that next step. So I'm gonna be sharing a couple of those next steps with you right now. The first is gonna be the Hope College Connection. And then I'm gonna also share just a few insights with LinkedIn. So I'm also gonna go ahead and share my screen. So I'm gonna first talk about the Hope College Connection. Hope College Connection is a brand new resource that launched for alumni in January. We launched it then to students in February. So it's again, fairly brand new. I want you to hear that there are 2000 alumni currently in this system ready and waiting to mentor you. So again, we're gonna share these resources with you post presentation, but you're gonna just start by heading to connection.hope.edu. You'll be able to get, um, started by building a profile. This is a slide, so I'm not going to actively click on anything, but you can see my picture over here. Um, when I click there, it'll say profile. Similar to Facebook, LinkedIn, um, Handshake, you'll want to create a profile. Now, we've told you to create a profile probably on three different platforms right now, and I know that's like very tedious to many people, but please take the time to fill those things out. You give it enough information, recruiters, employers, alumni can reach out to you and learn more about your skill set and what you might be the best fit for. So it's really important to take the time to do that. The Hope College Connection actually makes this even easier for you because if you have a LinkedIn profile already started, you can link your LinkedIn account to this profile will actually fill it out for you. So there's no excuse to not create a profile. It will create it for you in less than a minute. Any time that you make a, an addition to your LinkedIn profile, it will actually sync to the Hope College Connection and update it in the system. So it makes it super simple. So from this screen, you're going to click on this Make a Connection tab. And that opens up our alumni database. From here, you have many different search filter options. I love to tell students, let the system work for you. So you can put in a bunch of different filters across the top and click this set search alerts, and you can set it to email you or text you if you prefer that anytime a new user joins the database that you are wondering and um, want to connect with. So based on your filters, you then can take this matching quiz. Who doesn't love a good quiz? This quiz will actually curate your best matches based on what you're looking for. It'll start with your top three alumni based on the information you told it. I can search by keyword. I can bookmark alums to come back to. This archives your messages. You can search by location down to zip code. Industry expertise. There are 74 different industries in this database and we actually just checked and we have an alumni for every industry in this. You can um, also double up on your industries. So you can click um, marketing and you could click advertising and pair certain industries up as well. You can search by company or organization. There's lots of great organizations mentioned um, by Matt in the beginning of this presentation. This is a great place to look. And then the more filters lets you search by um, a major. Maybe you want to see all the chemistry grads because you're a chemistry major or a business major. Um, you can search if there are hope parents in this system. So not only do we let alumni in this database, we let our current parents of hope students as well as friends of the college. So maybe you're looking for a parent that filter will be there as well. And then you can clear out your filters and you can save them um, as you need.
One of the really cool features, I'm gonna go back a slide, I can go from this card view, which pops up like little tiles, but then I can click map view. What I love about this database, it shows you exactly where these alumni and families are. So these red hotspots obviously show concentrations of alumni, and then these little red um, navigation arrows show you individual alumni. If I were to click on those hotspots, it will actually pull up a list of those alumni that are in that area, and you can click on their profiles. This is also an international database. So if you've ever considered going abroad, we have alumni in 10 different countries as well. So when I find an alum and I go to their profile, this is what it'll look like. Um, you can put a background photo in here too if you want. I could bookmark Ashley if this was somebody I really wanna talk to, or maybe I just wanna spend some time trying to find um, a key group of alumni I wanna start reaching out to, but I'm just not ready to reach out to them just yet. Bookmark them, come back to them. I could read more about Ashley and say, wow, I would love to be an adoption counselor. I'm looking at nonprofit work. I wanna connect with her. So I'll click this Let's Connect button. When I do that, it's gonna pop over to a template view. And this template view is really nice because it lets me pick from three different templates. Many times I hear from students, I don't know what to say. How do I say it professionally? Um, I want them to reach back out to me. What, what do I say to make sure that happens? Uh, the whole college connection makes it really easy. Now, I recommend take these templates and make them your own because if you just use the standard career exploration template and there's 10 other students using it, it just loses its value. So make sure you put in there, hey, here are times that I'm available to connect. Here are days next week that if you're willing to talk with me, I'd be happy to, to hop online um, and get started. The Hope Connection actually has a Skype built into it, so you can request an appointment after this first initial reach out um, and go in when you're, you're ready to connect and pull up the video chat feature. So it's a one-stop shop to connect. I'm gonna then go over to LinkedIn. So LinkedIn is a great resource if you haven't already um, gotten a profile on there. What makes LinkedIn different from the Hope College Connection is that you can just find Hope alumni through the resources there. And the Hope College Connection, again, has the, those parents and those friends of the college. Every alumni that joins the Hope Connection actually has to show on their profile what topics they're willing to help you with. This could be a resume. This could be learning about a work-life balance, uh, learning more about their organization. There's many different help topics that they have to choose from. LinkedIn doesn't allow alumni to showcase what type of help they're willing to give you. So that's an advantage of the Hope College Connection. I think another advantage of the Hope Connection is these people join this database knowing and wanting to give back their time to you. Now, that doesn't take away from LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a great way to showcase your digital footprint and your skill set to employers um, as well as recruiters. Um, because the Hope Connection is so new, we're more likely to find employers and alumni on LinkedIn. So there is a LinkedIn database uh, that I will pull up and show you here. You're just going to go to the top left screen, type in Hope College. And when I find Hope's page, there's a button over here that says alumni. When I click on alumni, this is gonna open up a database of around 21,000 people. I can then click by the area of the country they're in. So we're just gonna say West Michigan, for our example. Maybe I'm very open to the organization, but I care about the industry. And I wanna see who's working in sales. I also wanna point out, you can see what they studied at Hope. So maybe I'm looking for sales, Greater Grand Rapids area and psychology grads. When I type that information in, if I scroll all the way down here, here are alumni and current students that are meeting that criteria. So just like the Hope Connection, I can click connect, pull up a message box and tailor that message for different alumni. One of the other um, new tools that LinkedIn recently rolled out is a quiz on a different skill. So you can actually get like endorsements on different skill sets. So maybe I take the quiz on Microsoft Word. And so you'll do a timed quiz and then that endorsement will go into your profile. So as Matt mentioned, professional development, showcasing new skill sets, that is something I highly encourage using with LinkedIn. 
but I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing my screen here. Are there any questions that I can answer about either platform, the Hope College Connection or LinkedIn? And while you're typing those questions in, just please know that LinkedIn and Handshake are appointments in, um, in Handshake. So if you want your profile to be reviewed, if you're like, is my profile even up to snuff? Can you take a, a look at it? Give me feedback. Please head into Handshake and schedule a LinkedIn appointment. If you want more information on networking, um, specific to an industry that you're targeting, um, alumni that we can recommend that you reach out to, um, again, go into Handshake and schedule a networking appointment. Both will come to me, um, and I'm happy to walk you through both of those systems. Thank you, Megan. One uh, thing that, that I've been hearing now, I think it's been true all along, is the importance of having a, a really good online presence. Um, and I think you've been touching a little bit on that with LinkedIn, but are you, you seeing that as well for um, kind of in the current, uh, the current uh, point in life that we're in right now? Yeah, I think um, most people are on social media, on LinkedIn, in the Hope College Connection more than ever because we're working remote, we're, we're more connected probably than we ever want it to be. So having a good digital footprint is really important. I think one of the stereotypes that are out there is like, I need to delete my Facebook, I need to delete my Instagram, be off Twitter, like have no presence whatsoever. Um, and I actually disagree with that. I think there are, know your industry, know what platforms your industry is living on, but it's okay to have a professional um, Facebook. Do I want my pictures of me out with my friends? Probably not, you wanna clean it up a little bit. Um, but know that recruiters and HR people do look you up. They do Google you. So having a digital footprint is really important. Um, if you're going to be in a graphic design field, have an Instagram. Showcase your uh, photography skills. So look at your industry. Look what people in the industry are using. And then try to find where those people are living and create profiles. You might have five profiles at the end of the day. But that's really good um, to do because it's creating an online portfolio of not only you, but of your work as well. So yes, people are connected more than ever. Get on the platforms that you feel like you need to. I would recommend bare minimum if you want to get started, definitely get a LinkedIn started, get into the Hope College connection um, and fill out that handshake profile that Casey mentioned. So those are might be my top three. Great. Thank you, Megan. Um, if there are other questions for Megan, go ahead and type them in the chat. We can hit those uh, even as, as we're going here or at the end. Uh, one of the things I just want to reinforce, uh, again, the importance that Megan was sharing about building your network. Uh, what an important thing um, in, terms of, in terms of finding those opportunities, in terms of connecting with people for opportunities that may not even be live or posted. That's such an important point to make. Um, creating that handshake profile, like Casey talked about, also a really super important thing. I think, like she said, one of the most uh, important things of, of handshake is the ability for your profile to look good, set alerts so that employers' uh, postings immediately become available to you and also such, set it so that you can be found um, in handshake, such an important thing. And then Matt made a number of comments about, uh, hey, you know what, this is a time we may just need to be patient. Um, things will take longer than what they have been in the past. And I think if we can set our expectations that way, um, just, yeah, we don't love it, but that's kind of what we're, that's kind of the world we're in right now. Um, and here's the other thing um, I, I want to share specifically to um, uh, juniors, sophomores, freshmen. Um, if you don't find an internship this summer, it is not the end of the world. So here's the deal. The rest of the country, every other student in this country is in the exact same boat as you. Internships are not as available as, uh, as, as they have been in the past. And so don't sweat it, right? This is not going to be a, a thing that's going to be a career ender for you. It's okay. Um, find some other things that you can be doing if an internship doesn't come up. There are a few other things I wanted to just share as uh, some points of advice. Um, that uh, I thought I wanted to just add to the uh, to the conversation today. So I'm uh, jumping over to um, share share a few thoughts from from where I sit. Um, one thing is 
is just be thoughtful when you're listening to the news. Um, you're going to see some sensational headlines uh, that are common. In fact, um, in fact, let me uh, let me show one that I just saw. Hopefully, you're still seeing my screen. Just today, just about a few hours ago, U.S. weekly jobs claims jumped by 6.6 .6 million, and and we've now lost 10% of the workforce in three weeks. Um, so. Just please, please be sensitive to when you're when you're reading the news. Um, make sure you understand what is um, what is data. What are some things that um, and what's really behind them? So, kind of continuing with that point, the unemployment numbers, like I just shared, they're unprecedented. But so is the situation. Remember that um, the jobs that are uh, the layoffs, jobs that are um, currently on hold right now are because of a shelter in place order, not because these organizations were fiscally challenged. So um, because of that, we may bounce back very quickly. There's gonna be a lot of opinions out there, a lot of experts saying, hey, I know exactly what's gonna happen. Um, we actually don't. We, we have not been through this kind of situation before. So um, I want you to just um, be aware and be thoughtful when you're listening to the news. Um, it may not be as bad as sometimes it, it sounds. Um, secondly, uh, I, I really encourage you to be strategic and to look at thriving industries. So here's a here's a thing to think about: what behavior change are happening? What behavior changes are happening now? What do you see yourself doing? Um, your your family, your friends, other people that are consumers. What are they doing? And then what of those behaviors might stick? So, for example, um, um, there's there's more remote workers. Um, you're, there's obviously um, there's people that are not doing big crowded events, less eating out. Um, now, what's interesting is as we're starting to see a few months ahead into the future, we look at China. Um, people are going back to work, but they're not going out to eat as much. Um, when it comes to buying a house, people are still buying houses right now, but these are this is happening in an and kind of a virtual tour format. Um, the, the, the closing on houses, whereas people come together to sign stacks of paper, um, it's all being done virtual. So my, my, my challenge or my request for you is be thoughtful as you're thinking about how's life changing for us and then what of these things might actually stick and then be thoughtful about those industries. So industries that'll benefit from these changes, uh, shipping, uh, delivery, transportation, um, the, is some of the delivery services have been popular now. Is that probably going to stick? Online learning, where you've all as students been experiencing that. So where are some of the opportunities in those kind of industries? Of course, remote conferences and meeting services. Um, and then and then obviously life sciences and research, we can't be doing enough fast enough um, in those areas right now. And those probably will continue to thrive. And then my final thought for you is just please be open to a great adventure. Um, I, I think it's one thing that I, I certainly saw for myself in my own career. I did not land my dream job immediately after college. Even in the best economic times, you won't find your dream job right away. And there are multiple paths to get there. There are multiple ways that you can uh, achieve your calling. So as you're thinking about that, give yourself a little bit of flexibility and give yourself a break. Maybe the path you thought you were going to go on right now after college isn't available or isn't as open as, you, as it used to be. Um, but that's okay, what are some of the other paths? What is feasible right now? You can still get there. God's called you to, to, called you to do great things. And so just because of this, it doesn't mean your calling has been derailed. All right, I will uh, stop sharing my screen at this point and go back to, uh, back to the full group. Um, are there any other uh, final questions or thoughts before we sign off for today? I have a question I typically get from students. Um, so Sean, this could be for you or for Matt from a HR recruiting perspective. Um, when is reaching out like too much? Like where do you cross the line of I'm, I'm being annoying, I'm, I'm pestering. Um, I think hope students tend to be very humble, which is a great trait, but they just kind of don't know when to reach out, how many times should they be reaching out, um, especially with the added layer of COVID and um, the points you've mentioned around just how busy people are. What is a good rhythm recommendation? 
Hmm. That's good. Do you want it, Sean? You want me to take it? Go ahead, Matt. Okay. Uh, that's a great question. It's it's and what's tricky about it is it, it is somewhat of a case to case basis, uh, depending on the company, the person, how many times you've communicated already. Uh, I always tell people and. Uh, uh, going straight back to scripture, but use the golden rule. Uh, so if you can step outside the situation for a minute and think, okay, if I was a hiring manager and somebody sent me a brief note and said, hey, just want to check in on the status of my application, would I think, my goodness, will they leave me alone? Or would I think, you know, that's a reasonable request. Uh, and that's that's really, I, I think, the basic principle that you can apply to it. Uh, the some general advice around that would be to try to be as brief as possible. Uh, don't You don't have to share the specifics of your current situation, even if sadly you're in a spot where you've got some financial hardship and you need, you really, it would be awesome if you heard back as fast as possible. You, you don't want to overshare or bring emotion or, or too much personalization to that kind of a communication. Uh, just sort of brief, brief check-ins. Uh, and I would say, uh, again, just generally, if you applied for a job on a Tuesday, it's totally normal uh, to not hear anything bad. And I think actually we have some handshake stats somewhere that we could get later for that. But uh, the average the average internship or job takes like 27 days before uh, applicants start to get responded to and over two months before a job is actually filled. So uh, just know that uh, th there's like two time continuums. One is for you and it feels like they should get back to you within 10 minutes. And for the employer, they might be dealing with 200 open positions and they're happy if they get back to you in, uh, uh, in 10 days. So try to be try to exercise patience but it's totally fine and most employers will either ignore your email or they'll write back to you and say uh, some sort of terse message if they think it's pushy and say hey as i as i told you last week it's going to be a few weeks before we get back to you please reach out to me at the beginning of may or something like that but i i think it's it's fine to check in every other week or so to follow up on an application All right, we have a question here. I'll uh, throw it out. If a, if a company, the company we're interviewing, you were interviewing with froze their hiring process, how would you move forward? Um, I'll, I'll just add, I'll just add um, one thought, but then invite uh, um, anyone else to chime in as well. Um, so I, I think this is one, one piece of advice you'll get from, from talking with folks in our offices. Make sure you got a lot of different tracks going, um, and and again, like kind of Matt man mentioned, be be aware of what you can control. Um, the the uh, these things I think are going to happen, and so if you if you have a multiple um, multiple opportunities that you're pursuing at at the same time, I think that's probably the best thing that you're going to be able to do right now. Um, and then um, just be be ready to check back with that company um, at the time when they feel like they they uh, they've told you um, if if they haven't given you a time. Um, watch the economic news, watch the industry news, and when it starts to look like um, hey, things might be opening back up for that business, then that might be the time to follow up again. Good questions. I think. I think another great strategy around just networking reach out and just say, are you willing just to have an informational interview with me? I would love just to continue to learn more about the company because then you can keep expressing your interest. So when it does, you know, turn around and they might start hiring again, you're a name that they're going to remember because you were just proactive, you were friendly, you were coachable, and you're showcasing a lot of your qualities and skills. Um, so reach out and say, I understand that you know, the company is at a, at a freeze right now, but I would just love to learn more about the company culture. Um, so just do take that as an um, opportunity to do some networking with that person. Um, they could just really appreciate the conversation in this stressful time to learn more about some great candidates um, coming out of Hope College too. I think that's awesome advice. I was, I was just going to say uh, a word that Matt Scogan has been talking a lot about, our, our president here at Hope has been talking about extending grace. Uh, and I think that's one way uh, you might use this in different life situations as well. As a recruiter, 
I used to deal with situations where I'd call people and tell them, hey, after four rounds of interviews, you did not get the job. And there's sort of this expectation that the candidate is going to be crushed and disappointed, mad. And there are times when that happens. But what is just awesome is when somebody is graceful in that situation, shows understanding, wants to, just like Megan said, have an engaging conversation, build somewhat of a relationship. Uh, that person is going to be the person that we go back to for that job as soon as there's another opening because they just really stood out uh, and acted graceful in a tough situation. So I think, Sai, if you get those types of communications, just like Megan said, reach back out to them, see if they're open to a conversation. Maybe you, if your situation allows for it, maybe you even offer up, look, I know this was for a structured paid 40 hour a week internship, just so you know. Uh, I'm, I'm very interested in your company or organization. I'm available to volunteer. I'm available for part-time projects. Uh, let me know if there's a way I can help in some capacity. I understand what you're going through and it's a tough time for you as an employer. Uh, that kind of answer and that kind of grace I think will make you stand out. All right, great. Well, I think we are about at the end of our time. Um, thank you so much, everyone, for joining in. I want to thank our presenters, Megan Schelt, Casey Petro, and Matt Atkins. Uh, thank you, students, for dialing into this. Um, uh, Casey mentioned it, but I'll say it again. Uh, the materials that we shared today with links to some of the resources, we will make that available to you as we wrap up. And then uh, just know that we're here for you. We are here to uh, meet with you. We still do appointments live through Handshake. Um, virtual appointments. So please, uh, any other follow-up questions you have, feel free to come and chat with us. We'd love to talk to you. All right. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day.